Hey, good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. My name is Mayur Shah. Thanks for joining the joining this webinar. Uh, it's about uh, just about time. Let's wait for a couple of minutes since we can get started, and then uh, we will get right into the webinar. Thanks for your patience, and uh, we'll get started in in a few minutes. All right, folks, um, let's get started right now. Uh, today's webinar, we are going to talk about a rapid application development platform uh, that helps enterprises to keep their developers, architects, and uh, CIOs happy. My name is Mayur Shah. I work for Waymaker. Uh, Waymaker is headquartered out of Mountain View, California. And it's an enterprise software platform for custom application delivery. Just a little bit about myself. I have about 18 plus years of experience, uh, mainly in middleware and security application development. For uh, for the previously uh, from Waymaker, I've had uh, stints at Cisco Systems, Informatica, and BEA Systems. So for the majority of my uh, professional career, I've uh, worked with companies uh, in uh, middleware and application development technologies. At Waymaker here, I look at customer success and product management for the APAC region, as well as the Europe region. A little bit about Promethe itself. Uh, Waymaker is uh, a company based out of Mountain View, headquartered out of Mountain View. Promethe Technologies is the parent company of Waymaker. Uh, Promethe has been around uh, since the last two decades. For those who are new to uh, Promethe, Promethe um, is, was one of the first uh, software products company to release a Java certified application server way back in 1998. And since then, Pramati has been working on a number of innovations. We've got a lot of lineage uh, in middleware and application development. And our Waymaker platform today that you are going to see and uh, look at is built by the same team that uh, over the years has built a number of products in the middleware technology. Uh, we've also been uh, over years, uh, we've been recognized uh, by a lot of analysts, um, and we have today about 1,200 plus employees across three different uh, continents uh, in US, UK, as well as in India. Let's talk a little bit about rapid application delivery. There, there's a lot of talk about rapid application delivery today. If you Google rapid application development, you see a lot of uh, articles, you'll see a lot of blogs written about it. And the reason for that is there is a market need and opportunity today for rapid application delivery platforms. There are three main influences of, of this. You know, over the last few years, we've seen that consumer web has made its web uh, influence on the enterprises. 
Today, there is an expectation that every enterprise application by default out of the box has to be good looking and as look, good looking as an, a consumer app. End users expect the same usability and user experience with enterprise apps as they have got used to using consumer apps. On the other hand, what we see in, within enterprises, uh, there has been a reduction in the budgets and the uh, investments across IT, across entire IT. And that has resulted in shortage of skill as well as shortage of manpower in uh, developing applications. Right? So, the, the, so the problem that enterprises have today is that while on one hand there is a lot of demand to build newer applications and do faster time to innovate, on the other hand they have less resources and the technologies that they need to grasp with um, it's posing challenges them for them to build applications faster. And so then the question is, why, where does the answer lie in? How can enterprises cope up with this challenge? The answer lies in modern application delivery platforms. Right? These are platforms that can help enterprises build and uh, deploy applications faster, at the same time do it in a simpler and easier fashion. But over the years what we've seen is that uh, there have been many platforms that have come and gone. One of the things that has been constant has been the fact that enterprises, when they adopt these kind of platforms, there are three main stakeholders that need to be satisfied in order for these platforms to be embraced. And these are developers, enterprise architects, and CIOs. All these three stakeholders have to be happy and have to be satisfied in order to embrace an application development enterprise platform. So today our focus of the webinar is how do you make all these three stakeholders happy uh, and what are the constituents of such a platform to make them happy. So we are going to talk about uh, Waymaker as a rapid application delivery platform that helps in this mission. And then we are going to talk about, uh, you know, the, uh, we'll do a live demo of the platform and then we'll take Q&A of, of, uh, of your questions. A little bit about what a rapid application delivery platform means today. You know, a few years back we had rapid application de uh, development tools like 4GL tools um, and some kind of code generation tools. Things have come a long way since then. Today it is not just about development, but the focus is on the entire application delivery effort. So in terms of the differences between a rapid application developer tool to a rapid application delivery platform, we see a sea change of differences. Primarily, the older tools were focused on code generation, whereas the newer platform, especially Waymaker, is focused on the entire application delivery. There was no focus on usability uh, before the consumer age. With the consumerization of IT, the focus is now on usability and user experience, and that is the key primary driver for these platforms. Older tools required a lot of setup, a lot of configuration to get to a point where app developers can start developing their applications. Whereas the delivery platform today is about a browser-based development environment where developers can get productive from the get-go. APIs we've seen in the last few years have exponentially grown both inside the enterprise as well as, well as outside the enterprise within cloud uh, services and cloud platforms. With the more modern rapid application delivery platforms, it is about seamlessly connecting the platform to various APIs so that application development can be done faster and more seamlessly. Mobility has been a key driving factor for applications today. A lot of enterprises do uh, have the strategy of mobile first enterprise and so with these platforms it is absolutely necessary for the platform to support mobility and uh, mobilization of applications. And finally, the ability to not just do development in a siloed approach, but integrate with the rest of the, uh, the enterprise release management and development operations can help a long way in making sure these platforms are embraced by enterprises. So with that, we are going to talk now about Waymaker as a rapid application delivery platform that has all these uh, key ingredients that we just talked about. Our product is called Studio. Uh, it is a visual rapid application platform 
where developers can drag and drop and build their entire application using a visual development approach. The applications that you can build are both web applications which are web responsive. That means these applications are built once and they can be viewed on a browser, on a desktop, on a tablet or on any mobile device. Or you can also now build mobile hybrid applications. If you are, in, if you are an enterprise that are looking to build mobile applications, Waymaker can be used to build such applications and deploy them to your various play stores or app stores and have your end users download them. It's a drag and drop approach which means you not only get out of the box widgets and you can build beautiful looking UI out of the box, but you also get seamless integration with various backend data sources, be it your databases, be it APIs, be it any other business custom business logic that your enterprise has. This means that you can repurpose and reuse your existing business logic which could be in your legacy systems or you can create modern business logic using APIs and seamlessly connect them to build these modern applications. So we are you are talking about full stack application development. One of the key things that we have seen is a lot of these rapid code generation tools earlier many years back were not embraced well by enterprises because of the fact that there was an inertia of the quality of code, the maintenance of the code that these tools generated. With Waymaker, we've taken maximum, uh, we've taken a lot of emphasis on making sure that the code that is generated out of the platform is of highest quality. Not just the code is well documented, but also the fact that this, the code is generated using best design patterns, be it MVC patterns or the various other patterns on the client side. And also the code is as close to a professionally developed code. This means that developers are comfortable with the code that is generated and also can easily maintain the code that is generated from the platform. And not only that, the, the, the code that is generated is also extensible, right? So the platform needs to cater to two different audiences. The novice developer who can build applications through a drag and drop mechanism. At the same time, when you want to address sophisticated use cases, you want professional developers to go and extend and customize the code. With Waymaker, you can take the application, take the code, and extend it using your own choice of IDE because what we generate out of the application is a Maven compliant application which can be built outside the studio and, and extended using any of your favorite IDEs. So more power to professional developers. In a nutshell, what we're looking at is high productivity application development environment where we see as much as up to 67% of faster development and uh, reduction in effort in various uh, use cases and various scenarios across our enterprise. So with that, let's now jump into a small uh, uh, first demo where we are going to look at the platform and, and show you how you can start developing application using this visual drag and drop approach. So this is the platform that you see here. It's a browser based platform. What you're seeing here is uh, once I've logged in as a developer, I can see all the applications that are developed by me as the owner or me as a contributor to one of these applications. We, we support collaborative application uh, development paradigm. So one or more developers as well as business users can all collaborate and work on the same project and share the same code repository in order for a productive application development environment. So let's go ahead and uh, create a new application. I'm going to create a web responsive application. Uh, and this ap application is about an assets database. Within an enterprise, the purpose of the application is for enterprises to 
uh, allow departments to request for various devices as new employees join the organization and then have IT administrators approve them depending on the availability of such devices. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, now that we are into the project uh, in this interface, we are going to now, I'll show you the application in its working. The application was built using Waymaker and then we'll build a portion of that application using the demo today. So I'm logging in into the application as a normal departmental user from the sales department. As you can see here, the first thing that I can see here is a catalog of various devices that the enterprise has, which allows a department um, admin to request for these devices for the new employees that have joined the organization. There are listing of various desktop devices, there's listing of smartphones and so on and so forth. There's also a dashboard that allows the department admin to see the various devices that have been approved, that have been uh, already sanctioned into the department, and the kind of, uh, and across departments, the dispersion of these devi devices. So a dashboard of that. And finally, a view assets page where, depending on the devices that have been ordered, the department admin can go and look at those devices that have been requested. Right? Now when I log out from this application, and I log in as an IT administrator. You can see that the IT administrator has additional capability. It is about looking at the requested devices and then being able to assign those devices based on the quantities that, uh, that are left uh, to be assigned. So that way it's a role-based application where different roles can perform different uh, operations within the uh, application and depending on that uh, they can uh, do this workflow. So this is the application. This was built using Waymaker's drag and drop visual approach. What we're going to do now is we are going to build this catalog page, right? We're going to build this catalog page and see how this all the pieces of the application and the backend services come together. So I'm going to start with a very open problem. Uh, this is a new project that we just created and let's go ahead and build the catalog page. So one of the first things that we can do is we've got this, we've got various, for every page there are various layouts and the, lay, the layout that we are using right now is header, top nav, left nav and content, but you can choose to use different layouts. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to change this uh, layout left navigation to include and change the titles according to our pages. So we'll give a caption here called ca uh, catalog page. Similarly, we can go in and change the other uh, navigation links. View assets, you can go and change it to form. inventory and so on and so forth. So the, the thing you can see here in Waymaker is anytime you work on a widget which is on the main canvas, on the right hand side you see a property panel. The property panel allows you to change the captions, to change the, the layout, you can change the look and feel of the widget. We use standard bootstrap mechanism so that every widget that you place on the application is styled according to standard bootstrap classes. This means that your existing Bootstrap and JavaScript developers can be productive from the get-go when they start using this platform. And also you can associate various kinds of events to each of these uh, widgets. So now that we've changed the navigation uh, links, we'll go ahead and uh, save this and go back to our main page and create additional pages. So we'll create a new page called View Assets page. We'll keep it blank for now and use the same navigation layout. And we can now go back to our view assets navigation and on the right property panel, go to the mouse events of on click and you can see that they are all the pages that we've created, they show up here and you can do the easy linking right here. So we can go and link this page here. Right. So let's go back to our um, 
main page. Now on the main page, the way the application gets built using Waymaker is that you have a set of data sources that you want to get the data from and then you have a set of pages with the widgets that then bind to those data sources. The binding happens through what we call as variables. So the first thing we are going to do is in Waymaker you can bind to various kinds of data sources. Where our data is kept in a database uh, and the database is a MySQL. So we support all the various databases that you may have within your enterprise. The databases you can connect to are Oracle, SQL Server, Postgres, DB2 and MySQL. These databases can be within Waymaker or they can be uh, outside Waymaker in, in your repository which typically most enterprises have and you just point to the, that database and Waymaker can start working with that database. Right now I'm going to point to an external database here, mm -hmm. internal database called uh, assets DB. Okay, so before we do that we've got to import the database. So let's go ahead and import it. It shows you all the tables that you that are part of the database and then you can go ahead and import the database. Once the database is imported, you can see that all the database tables are right here. You can see the relationships between the primary key and the foreign keys and you can uh, visualize the entire database schema right here. In fact, this is what we call as database designer. This allows the developer to also create the schema right from here if you don't want to import an existing schema. We also provide you with a SQL query editor so that you can create your own queries here and also a stored procedure uh, editor so that you can point to your stored procedures that you already have. So now that we have imported the database, on the left hand side you see the services tab and there you can see that the tables are imported and they are all sh shown here. So let's go back to our main page and now what we are going to do is we will start building the catalog page. In order to build the catalog page, we are going to first drag and drop a panel. Now this is the deal with Waymaker. You can see here that we support a number of out of the box widgets, be it tables, lists, forms, panels, HTML5 widgets, charts and you name it. The other thing about Waymaker is if for some reason you have widgets that are not available here, you can go and create your own widgets, what we call as prefabs, and you can, in your prefabs, you can import your own JavaScript libraries, your own jQuery libraries, or any third party libraries, and bring them here. We have a number of prefabs that we provide out of the box, but you can go and create your own prefabs for widgets that you need uh, in, in the application. But for a lot of, for 99% of the use cases, we have all the widgets available for you out of the box. So let's go and drag and drop a panel onto the main canvas and as soon as you drag and drop that you have all the properties that you can go and configure here. So we can basically call this as our devices panel um, and then in the in the panel the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop a card cards uh, widget. It's called a cards panel cards panel. And what it does is, what we've done is we have increased the sophistication on the kind of UI applications you can build. Most of our widgets are highly sophisticated. When anytime you need a list of items, you need a list of tables, you need forms, you need live forms, you need live tables. We've gone ahead and created beautiful, beautiful looking widgets which are highly sophisticated. One such example is this cards widget. So when I drag and drop a card widget, it first thing it tells me how do how do you to what data source you want to bind this widget. So in our case, we have a assets database, and we are going to create a new variable for the device inventory table. Device inventory is the table which has all the information about the devices. So we can point to that, and then you can represent that information in a variety of ways. We provide a very a number of templates that you can use to visualize that information. In this case we are going to use a product inventory table which can show you 
the various devices that that you want to use as part of the uh, as part of the application. So let's go ahead and uh, use that. And we'll use a, a pagination, which is a classic pagination panel. Now you see that on that card widget, there are a number of properties that you can now bind to the corresponding columns in your table. So it's as simple as taking, selecting the widget uh, property and then selecting the various columns that you have in your database table. In case of our database table, we have an image URL for name. I'm going to use the processor. These are all the information of the device. Model, there's a model name. We've got quantity with the cost and then description could be uh, the storage of that. So once I've done this, I can go through this step and with WayMaker you have this option to run the application. Anytime you want to do and see the application in action, you can just click on this one click run button which automatically takes the application, packages into a WAR file, deploys it to an application server and right away you see the application running on the browser. It's as simple as that. Now you can see here that all my devices are, uh, are seen here and you can see the various properties of the devices. So this is our catalog page. Now we can go ahead and start tweaking this page to make it more accustomed to our requirement. So you can go back to studio and one of the things we could do for example is let's say I want to group all the catalog uh, devices using the catalog name. So I can go, go here and say that I want to group all these devices by the catalog name, right? So we can do that and save the application. The other thing we could do is instead of view all specification, we want that name to be request devices. Right? Uh, you could also do things like, let's say if I have a quantity which is the cost, I can go to the, the quantity variable and in the cost I can change the cost to include a formatted according to my requirement. In this case, I want the cost to have a currency of US dollars, so you can do that. So there are expression builders that you can assign to each and every property and that, that you can visualize the data uh, in various different forms. Right. So after making these changes, again, I can run the application and see the changes. So now you can see that all the devices have been uh, are all grouped together by the catalog name. So there are desktop devices, there are laptop devices, and there are smartphones, right? And uh, and it's it's and uh, these are all requests. So you can now start requesting these devices. So as you can see here, it's it's extremely seamless and simple to a build a beautiful looking UI, but also start creating UI applications which are full fledged and bound to various business logic or data on your backend uh, sources. Right? Now, one of the things we can do here is, uh, so let's stop here and let's continue on the, the, on the presentation. We'll come back to this application and add a lot more things about security, we'll talk about uh, APIs and, and so on. So, so we talked about the, uh, we, show, we, we, we showed you a application that was built using drag and drop. We understand that enterprises want standardization and want an open platform. So in terms of the code that gets generated using Waymaker, it is built on standards. It's on, built on open standards. The front end code is built using AngularJS, HTML5 and CSS and the server side code is built using Java Spring and Hibernate. What this means is that there is no vendor locking at all. The application that gets 
developed out of WayMaker is a standard Java app, web application or a mobile application in case of Android or iOS. And there is absolutely no vendor lock-in from the platform standpoint. And in that regard, um, there is a very low total cost of ownership because in case of the platform, the development is licensed based on just the number of developers. We can deploy the application on a public cloud or on a private cloud, but it and the deployment can also happen using Docker containers. And more, most importantly, the stack that we use, the application stack that we use to develop the application is a modern stack, which means any enterprises that is embracing this platform has a long leeway, long uh, uh, time frame to to use this stack because it's a modern modern stack that that is applicable for few uh, for a longer time in in terms of an investment cycle. The apps can be deployed on public cloud. It could be your Amazon cloud. It could be Azure. It could be Google Cloud Platform or any other public cloud you, you choose to use. Also, it can be deployed on your existing on-premise infrastructure. A lot of enterprises have existing investment in their application servers, and they don't necessarily want to move to public cloud. And in that case, what WayMaker allows them is to take this application and deploy, to, deploy the application to their existing um, deployment infrastructure. And that is very handy when it comes to enterprises. So let's go back to the application now and let's to look at some of these aspects that we just talked about. As you can see here in the application, uh, we, we used various uh, services from the back end. We used uh, various widgets on the client side. Let's go and look at the code that gets generated. On the client side, the code is pure HTML code and JavaScript code and it uses um, AngularJS tags for the client side. So AngularJS tags for the client side, AngularJS, HTML, um, and uh, JavaScript code, which means that this code can be extended. For example, if I, if I go back to my main page here, let's say I drag and drop a button. And on the button, I would like to do a custom JavaScript. So on click of the button, if I say JavaScript, it takes me to the JavaScript panel, and I can I am free to now customize the JavaScript client side code if I need to. This means anytime you have customization for your application, which is highly which is sophisticated or needs a very uh, unique customization needs, developers can go ahead and use JavaScript to customize their client side. Now for the most part, you don't need to because a lot of widgets take care of a lot of configurations and customizations out of the box. But if you do need to, you have this option to do that. Now let's look at some other aspects. We talked about uh, client-side code. What about server-side code? So if you look at the server-side code, A, if you look at the entire project, it is extremely well laid out with the right directory structures and all that. And also if you look at the, uh, the services code on the client server side, the, as I mentioned earlier, the code is built using design patterns. So the server-side code follows an MVC pattern. There is a controller layer, there is a DA layer, there is a services layer, and all the files themselves are generated such that there is proper documentation in the code, there is legibility, there is enterprise standards in generating the code so that developers can easily maintain and understand this code. That is something that we have taken a lot of care and we understand that for a rapid application delivery platform, this is, from our standpoint, this is a very important aspect to, to consider. So let's go back to our presentation now. Well, let's talk a little bit about security. Security is something that all enterprises care about, whether it is web applications or mobile applications, as they take their applications uh, to enterprise grade level, if they these are applications that are used by the partners, customers. They want the applications to be secure. From a security standpoint, we, we take a holistic approach where we see the security for us is the application needs to have flexible ways to authenticate the user in a secure manner and also authorize the various users that are using the application. From an authentication standpoint, 
we have various mechanisms whether it is form based auth based or token based security for authenticating not just the end users but also the apis and also we support single sign on we understand that large enterprises when they deploy multiple applications out of Waymaker, they want those applications to share this uh, single sign-on for for ease of uh, use for the end users, and we support single sign-on. And from an authorization standpoint, we support various uh, coarse-grained and fine-grained uh, authorization approaches. In terms of authentication, we support databases, LDAP, Active Directory, or single sign-on, and we also support custom security. For example, if you have your own enterprise identity infrastructure that you want to integrate the application to, you can use custom security option in the authentication and authenticate users to, to your custom security systems. From an authorization standpoint, you can protect the pages, you can protect individual widgets, you can protect individual services, so it can be as coarse-grained or as fine-grained as you, as you need. And then from an enterprise standpoint, we understand that enterprises, today's enterprises, you know, there's a strong integration between developers and operations. And that's where the DevOps culture has come into place. With that, what happens with Waymaker is it supports a centralized code repository where all your code is persisted. From the code repository, there is an option to automatically kick, uh, you know, build in integrate with various um, continuous integration tools like Jenkins or Octopus. That way your code that gets checked into Waymaker repository can automatically trigger builds, test scenarios, automatically uh, take the application, build it, and move it to various stages within your enterprise. Now with Waymaker Enterprise, as I mentioned earlier, it, uh, it's a complete developer and deployment platform. For the deployment, we provide Waymaker Cloud, which is available with Waymaker Enterprise. And with Waymaker Cloud, you can set up various environments like development, staging, and production, and your applications can, can be deployed to these various stages. So that way you have uh, a great flexibility in terms of integrating with your existing enterprise delivery mechanisms and processes when you're developing applications using Waymaker. Right? So, so let's talk a little bit about Waymaker Enterprise. Uh, before that, we'll just quickly look at the demos for security. So in our application here, let's go back to the main page. On the, to, to enable security, it is as simple as going to the security option and just turning on the flag, turning on the button. The moment you turn on the button here, you get various options in terms of which security provider you want to use. It could be a database, which means you can use your own custom table which has information about user IDs, username, passwords and roles or you can use LDAP mechanism where you can connect your internal secure LDAP uh, within the enterprise and basically connect and authenticate users or you could use Active Directory and similarly you can use CAS which is a single sign-on CAS server that you can deploy and have multiple applications point to that. So in our case let's just for the demo purpose we'll use a demo uh, provider which has admin user role and user role and it's got various uh, users and as you can see here all the pages within the application can be now protected right you can go and say I want my uh, pages to be uh, I want the view assets page only to be av uh, available to the admin role right similarly uh, I want other pages to be available to everyone and you can go to individual services as well and say that uh, my services individually can be protected to various uh, various roles right so you can do that the other thing i wanted to mention here is that when you uh, when you use security you have this option the other thing is that when you because we've imported a database here we, Waymaker also provides an automatic way to create services for the various business logic that you have. In our case, we, we have a database service which has all these four tables. And these tables have various um, columns and uh, uh, data that you can fetch from that. With Waymaker, we have this concept called API Designer, which automatically publishes REST APIs 
for all the CRUD as well as search operations for your tables. So you can see here um, there are get, post, and put, put and delete APIs. These are REST APIs that are automatically generated for your business logic. So that's, that comes very handy when you are building multiple applications using WayMaker. One application can, can create, these, uh, create a business logic, create automatically generated REST APIs which other applications can consume and build out of that. So in a way you can build composable application infrastructure using WayMaker. And that, that is very powerful when it comes to large enterprises. So, so with that, uh, let's just talk with a couple of more things uh, and then we can open up the call for, for your questions and answers. I mentioned earlier that uh, we have the ability to export the app. Uh, so you can export the app to a, as a WAR file, which means you can take the WAR file and deploy it to any environment of your choice. You can also export the app as a zip file, which means you can download the application, uh, the entire source code, and once you have that, this is a Maven compliant uh, project. Which means you have the Maven files to build this application um, and, uh, and build it outside studio. You can also take this application and import it into an IDE of your choice. It could be IntelliJ, it could be Eclipse and extend the server side code. So that is a lot of power for professional developers who are looking to do things more productive using this platform. We talked about uh, version control system where you can uh, all the code that is generated from the application can be deployed uh, sent to that. So in this case, uh, we built this application. Let's now go and push all our changes to the source control system so that other developers or business users that are part of the same application can can import uh, join the project and and continue development from there. And then finally, let's talk about deployment. With any application that you build using WayMaker, you can deploy the application on a public cloud like Amazon, or you can deploy it to a WayMaker cloud. Now, WayMaker cloud is a special cloud that is built using Docker, Docker containers. And you get WayMaker cloud when you are when you buy WayMaker Enterprise. Uh, it gives you the ability to rapidly deploy applications using a container model. Containerization is a uh, highly sophisticated and optimized way to do virtualization and with containers you can you know bring up environments in a matter of minutes as opposed to hours when you're using virtual machines so now that uh, I've deployed this target I can now deploy my application you can see that dynamically WayMaker now provisions a docker container onto which it can activate that container and deploy our web application to that container once it does that you now get a URL that you can just click and you have the application running on WayMaker Cloud. WayMaker Cloud can be set up as an on-premise private cloud and it complements very well to your application development effort and process. So with that, uh, I think uh, we've kind of gone through the slides uh, and, uh, and the feature and the demos. Let's now talk a little bit about enterprise. Uh, I said earlier that it's an on-premise platform. You can get a 30-day trial of WayMaker Enterprise. Uh, you, there is a way to uh, request for the trial, and, and we can, all, can also request for a demo of the platform. And uh, these are some of our showcase applications that we have on our website. You can go and check that out. Uh, before I end, let me just summarize our uh, with a couple of uh, slides. In terms of WayMaker, while there are few rapid application platforms out there, the way we differentiate from a WayMaker standpoint is, number one, it's the industry's most open and visible platform that is extensible for developers. So that is one of the key points. It provides high productivity through our drag and drop, out of the box widgets, sophisticated UI designs, so it gives you a productivity gain. I mentioned earlier we take a lot of care in making sure the quality of code generated by this platform is of the highest quality. It gives complete freedom of applications deployment so that your customers or your partners can take this application and deploy it and you know use it however they want. It has enterprise grade security mechanisms built in and the ability to integrate with your modern DevOps lifecycle and processes. And most importantly, it provides the lowest TCO from a RAD platform standpoint.
these are some of our customers. We have customers across the world. Uh, we have developers across the world who are using our platform. Uh, we have third-party credentials that have rated the platform very high, be it your Gartner, Captera, or G2 uh, platforms. These are uh, credited B2B platforms where you can rate enterprise platforms, and that's where we've got a rating. And we are recognized by various uh, analysts and by various uh, uh, business awards uh, every year. And finally, uh, this is how you get the platform. So with that, uh, let's open up the Q&A so that we can take questions and, uh, and uh, answer what, whatever questions you have. Now, hi, Mayur. There is a question here uh, which goes saying that we are an enterprise company with over seven developers. What would be the right WaveMaker offering for us? Sure. So uh, it's a great question. Um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, WayMaker Enterprise is uh, our enterprise offering uh, which has all the premium capabilities um, that we talked about today. Uh, and it is available as a, a on-premise deployment. Uh, we provide a, a, a fully packaged VM that enterprises can take and deploy into uh, their uh, data centers and they have uh, and have the platform up and running. So with WayMaker Enterprise is the right offering, the right product. Uh, it is uh, licensed based on number of developers that you have. So if you have seven developers, uh, we can uh, license the platform uh, just purely on the number of developers only. Uh, we start, uh, you can take a 10 developer license uh, if you think uh, you know, you're going to grow to like, 10 developers uh, and, uh, and, and start using this platform. There is no limitation on how many applications you can build. There is no limitations on how many end users can use your applications and there's no limitation in terms of how you deploy and um, use their application. So your applications are, are, is your IP. Uh, from a platform standpoint, we just license you based on the number of developers and, that, and then you're ready to go. Any other question? Yes, uh, there's one more question which says, uh, what type of apps can I build using WaveMaker and are there any limitations? Sure. So what we're seeing is, um, you know, you know, across various enterprises that have started, uh, you know, that have adopted our platform and where we see a lot of uh, success, is WayMaker is used in uh, these types of applications. A, when you have data-driven applications, you want to build applications with, uh, you know, with, with a lot of data that you have and you want to synthesize that data, uh, have various UI sophistication in terms of how you visualize the data. So what we call those as data-driven applications, they are uh, one of the flavors of applications that our customers use. Then you have enterprise portals. A lot of our uh, customers in the insurance, banking, um, and those uh, industries, they, are, uh, they have a lot of pressure in uh, modernizing their portals. Uh, and so we see a lot of uh, use of the platform in uh, creating modern portals uh, which are used by their customers, agents, and, and so on. Then we see uh, uh, the third kind of category of applications where WayMaker is used is uh, uh, legacy migration applications, right? So modernization. So you know, if we are uh, enterprise is using uh, Lotus Notes, it's using Oracle Forms, it's using Microsoft, um, uh, 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 you know, Microsoft Access, or it's using uh, you know Power Builder. So there are a lot of enterprises that are modernizing and repurposing their legacy infrastructure to modern, so to support modern usability and modern devices uh, because they want their application to be responsive, to be used on devices. So that's where we're seeing a lot of uh, usage of WayMaker as well. And the last category of application I would see, I see is, uh, you know, just in cases where you want um, applications that need to integrate to various APIs, uh, you've got your business logic in uh, various APIs, be it APIs in your existing, uh, within your enterprise, or APIs uh, on the cloud, and you want to build these applications that can leverage these APIs and kind of synthesize business logic quickly together. So that's where we are seeing uh, a lot of use of WayMaker. The only place I would see where WayMaker cannot be used is when you're kind of building things like gaming applications or, or, or like you know, extremely sophisticated consumer kind of application like an Uber kind of an application. Uh, but bearing those kind of applications, we see most of the enterprise scenarios where you have this mobile first and, and you know, kind of responsive kind of applications that you want to build. 
uh, we see a lot of uh, usage of our platform. Anything else? Uh, uh, we have a question here on security. So the question goes, okay. we use custom security system to authenticate users. Can we integrate WaveMaker into it? Or can, or can we integrate the security into WaveMaker? Yeah. So one of the things we do understand is that every enterprise uh, is slightly different when it comes to security. We uh, not only support the standard security products that enterprises deploy like your Active Directory's LDAP or, or single sign-on systems, but a lot of times customers have their own you know, way of doing security, right? That may be because of the pressure of the industry that they're in or because of the pressure of the customers that they have. And in that case, we have a mechanism to customize the authentication through our Spring security module. So our, again, going back, right, because we are an open platform, things can be plugged in, into our platform. So from a security standpoint, you can plug in a six Spring security provider, which is which where you write uh, your custom security using our Spring security framework, and then you can basically put in any logic there and connect to your any uh, uh, to your custom security system. So we do have customers that um, use this option a lot because they uh, have very sophisticated and customized uh, approaches to to secure their applications. Uh, there is one more question here which asks what is the difference between WaveMaker Online and WaveMaker Enterprise? Sure. So WaveMaker Online is a cloud-based development uh, of WaveMaker applications. Uh, um, basically, this is WaveMaker Online is mainly suited and uh, positioned for like small and medium uh, businesses and individual consultants where their focus is mostly to, you know, build uh, applications on the cloud they can use some test data on the cloud and, and just you know try the try the applications out and 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 do that uh, whereas waymaker enterprise is an on premise um, platform to build uh, not just the application but the entire application delivery uh, on an on premise uh, setup so which means uh, with waymaker enterprise you have uh, connectivity to your on-premise systems that I talked to you earlier about. Your data does not leave the firewall, does not leave the data center. Uh, it is secure. Your code is within your enterprise. Uh, you can follow your modern DevOps practices and all of that. So Vivica Online is really suited for small businesses and for individual developers uh, where you just go log into the Vimaker cloud and and uh, and you and develop your application. Whereas WaveMaker Enterprise is an on-premise infrastructure uh, application platform infrastructure for for enterprises. Uh, Mayur, I think that's the wrap on the questions from here. All right, thanks, uh, thanks so much, Aditya. So. Thanks uh, everybody for joining this webinar. Uh, I hope this was a good use of your time. I look forward to engaging with uh, all of you uh, after the webinar. And please, please feel free to uh, email me. Uh, my email is right here, myu.sha at waymaker.com. There are these links here to sign up for a free trial and to request for a customized demo of our Waymaker Enterprise platform. And we look forward to helping you and making you successful using Waymaker. Thanks so much and uh, have a nice day.